For today's Ask Austin, I'm talking to Jane from Jenny Flower Photography. This episode of Ask Austin is brought to you by the Scottish Wedding Collective. We have brought together some of the best wedding suppliers in Scotland into one place, a one-stop shop for all your planning needs. Find us at www.scottishweddingcollective.co.uk or on Facebook. So hi Jane, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. So Jane, thanks for joining us. You run Jenny Flower Photography. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, well, I'm a photographer and I have been in business since 2004 and um, I've got a studio in downtown Stirling and photographed weddings since 2004 and uh, opened the baby studio in 2017 and um, yeah, so I shoot babies, well I don't shoot babies, but I photograph babies, <laughs> babies and maternity and family portraits and you know, newborn through first year is really the studio. But um, I do some work out in the woods behind my home as well for maternity photos and family photos and things like that. But obviously all the weddings are at venues around Scotland, around the central belt mainly. Yeah, great. So what made you get into photography? Because I think your, your career before was very different. Yes, I used to be a flight attendant for United Airlines. And when I graduated from flight school, my family bought me a camera. And I just kind of went nuts on my layovers and took photos of flowers on, you know, in, in, in California and Hawaii and then photographed street people and, you know, took pictures of graffiti and things like that. And then I had a uh, photography show at one of the local cafes in Seattle and uh, some of my work sold and I got a good response from it. And then everybody started me, started asking me if I'd photograph their weddings and I didn't think that I'd be good enough. Uh, to do that, but I took a shot at it and did it and enjoyed it. And then when I moved out here, um, I had registered, I was getting married and I registered with the ladies at Debenhams and um, my ex-husband went around and told them how great of a photographer I was and they asked to see my work and then they invited me to a wedding fair. And so that was in 2004 and I got my first wedding booked for that July and then that year I shot about nine weddings and the following year it was over 30 and then the following year I was getting so many weddings that I had to cut it back because I was really overwhelmed. And I think the year that I was pregnant with my son in 2008, I photographed close to 70 weddings. Wow. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> Because it's not just the wedding, obviously, it's all the editing and that, that goes on in the background yeah, as well. Yeah. So. There was a lot of little weddings that I was doing, though, because I was involved in a, in a, um, uh, with, a, with a wedding planner called Highland Country Weddings. They're not in business anymore, unfortunately, but they were booking a lot of couples coming across from America. So it was like, you know, just small weddings of like two and four, sometimes up to 10 people. And so it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't too hard on the editing side, but it was driving, you know, because I was a couple of hours away from Stirling at a time and climbing up the top of Borthwick Castle when I was nine months pregnant, you know, and just, <laughs> it was really, yeah, it was really, it was too much. And I kind of had to, you know, uh, take a little bit of a break the following year once I had my son, which is understandable anyway. But now I limit it to about 30 weddings a year, especially with the studio. Because yeah. I'm way too busy with um, babies. I have a, I have babies in the studio about three days a week. And so, um, yeah, just with the editing side of things, it's it's a lot of work. So yeah. a lot of behind-the-scenes work that people don't realize. So Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something that I find as well. You know, obviously when you talk to them and, and you quote your price, they might think, oh, that, that seems a lot. But then they don't realize what, what you have to do in the background. It's not just a case yeah. of turning up and then firing it on a... A USB and saying, yeah. there you go, you know. Um, well, I think people don't realize that sometimes with the amount of work that's done, it's involved in editing and also with building albums and then meeting with clients and this and that, you end up making sometimes like 10 pounds an hour. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? And so I love what I do and it's, you know, it's my hobby as well as, you know, my work but I look you know I mean it's you know I, I wouldn't want to do anything else but you know it's it is it is time consuming yeah. so 
Just yeah. just going back to a point you made about um, having the 70 odd weddings. I know that when I first started, it was a case of getting as many as I could and do as many weddings in that one year. I think there is a tendency to do that when you're starting out. But you, you're absolutely right. You have to step back and say, right, actually, you need some me time as well. So I'm going to set a number of 30 weddings a year and stick to that. Yeah. It's very, well, it's really hard for me to say no. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, I have people contact me, you know, throughout the year and sort of say, you're our favorite, please, can you do it? And so I end up doing, you know, more than I should. I think last year I shot 37 when really I try to limit it to 30, but I do get people that I've met at other weddings and they see how I shoot and they see how relaxed I am mm -hmm. and how I don't take the bride and groom away for ages and that, you know, I'm always focused on what they want rather than what I want as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's trying to make sure that they're enjoying their day and that I'm not monopolizing their whole drinks reception, taking photos. I don't want people feeling like they have a camera in their face and I'm always trying to crack jokes to make people laugh so I get natural shots. But I think that a lot of the guests will see how I work and then they'll end up, you know, contacting me to shoot their weddings. And so some people even change their dates in order to have me there because wow. I've been obviously, I mean, if you look at people who are in their early, well, their late twenties, early thirties, they're at a lot of weddings. You know, I mean, there's, you know, sometimes there's five or six weddings for them a year because all their pals are getting married yep. and they'll see other photographers and how they work. And so it's really good if people pay attention at weddings, if they're thinking about popping the question, looking at what the other photographers are doing at the weddings, seeing how long the bride and groom are being taken away for and, you know, paying attention because you've got to spend, you know, eight to 10 hours a day that day on your special day with your yeah. photographer. Do you know, it's if you, if you don't, you know, like their personality or do you feel like they've really kind of dominated the day then you don't really want them being there on your day yeah you know so no, I, I, and that leads really nicely into a question that i had for you in terms of what advice would you give to couples for picking the photographer yeah i think one of the biggest things is you need to look through a good three or four of their albums from start to finish make sure that if they have online galleries that if you know like i have brides and grooms who don't mind sharing their images with my future clients. So if they um, don't want a personalized password, then I have sort of general passwords that I can say to future clients, hey, go on and look at my recent events. And if you can get in with this password, they're more than happy to let you look at their images. If it's a private password, they're not. So look through the wedding from start to finish, make sure you like my work. Because if you come to me and say you want something more dramatic, I'm maybe not going to be the girl for you. Mm. You know, I'm a really easygoing photographer. I don't use external, you know, sort of big flashes. I don't have an assistant to carry around extra equipment. You know, everything that I do is really natural, easygoing. I try and get it done as quickly as possible. Well, it should, shouldn't say quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm efficient. Yes. And, you know, I'm creative and I'm efficient and I know... You know, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, what you just need to make sure that if you're wanting somebody who's more of a staged photographer, who wants, who, who, you know, if you're the girl that is, you know, sort of like Jordan and who wants things really posed and, you know, glamorous and that, you know, I'm maybe not the girl for you. Do you know, I have, I have a more of an easygoing approach where I'm trying to capture people laughing and, you know, I'll capture your guests and kids running around and, you know, just everything as it's happening, really. So when you're looking for a photographer, make sure that you look through their work from start to finish. Don't just look at the albums that they give you um, because it's mo most of those albums are all of their best pieces. Yes. You know, and you need to make sure that the photographer that you book knows how to shoot inside as well as outside, in the rain, in the dark, do you know, all the different lighting situations and a lot of photographers are great shooting outside, but as soon as they get inside, they have no idea what they're doing with lighting. Yeah. You know, and they don't know how to use lighting to their advantage, like window light and things like this and how to use their flash, how to bounce it off the ceiling and how to create that kind of 
Yeah. So yeah. that even light that you need, but yeah. So that's, that's what I would say to couples who are looking to book a photographer, just make sure that you like their style because you don't want to go to an artist who, who paints like Picasso and ask him to, for a Monet. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're completely different yeah. artists. And so you need to look at a photographer like that. It's just, you know, everybody, everybody's different and you can't just assume that they're going to shoot exactly like you want. You need to make sure that they're, yeah. So yeah, I, absolutely. I don't know. I can, yeah. No, that, that, that's brilliant advice. Perfect. Yeah. So in terms of um, what's the best piece of advice you have been given from somebody else that you wish you knew when you first started out? Mm, that's a good question. The best piece of advice that I've been given by another know. by another photographer, for example. No. I don't actually know. That's fine. I, don't, I, I think that one of the biggest things, both for the client and for the photographer, is to make sure that you're signing a contract. Mm. You know, I think a lot of new photographers don't have a contract. Yeah. And, you know, uh, that couple could come back and say, hey, look, we've decided to go with somebody else and you've held that date for them without a deposit, you know, without a contract to hold them to. And it's, you know, and then I, the same, you know, same situation for the client. You know, if you don't sign a contract with a photographer, then they don't have to honor their commitment to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was one thing that I learned in the first year that I started yeah. Um, you know, but I don't know about other photographers. I mean, it's, I just, you know, it, it, nobody's really ever given me a piece of advice. Um, other than that, just to make sure that you've got a contract in place. I guess, yeah. I guess it's, it's not just that. The other thing about a contract is you know exactly what you're getting. So as a couple, yes. you can say, right, this is exactly what Jen's going to provide for me. And there's no coming yeah. back later on in the day and saying, well, actually, we had a chat and you said you would give me this. It's not in the contract. Yeah. You know, and never, yeah, exactly. Never happened, so, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. yeah. In terms of people want to follow you or get in touch, where can they find you? Oh, well, I'm on Instagram and <laughs> Jenny Flyer Photography. And I have a Facebook page under the same name. I also have a website, which is uh, jennyflyerweddings.com. And, um, I'm on Twitter, Jenny Flower Wed. Um, but I'm not on Twitter that often. I don't really know how to work it very well. No. <laughs> I don't really understand Twitter. There's not enough pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so, well, and I'm in, Instagram's better. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I um I advertise in the Scottish Wedding Directory, which is now known as the Scottish Wedding is it the Scottish Wedding Magazine? They changed their name. Right. And Tie the Knot Scotland. And um, oftentimes they'll feature my weddings in the magazine. So if I'm not in one, in one issue, then I'll be in the other because they usually um, are, well, they're very good to their advertisers. And if, um, you know, if, um, if you're advertising in the magazine, then you usually will be featured mm -hmm. throughout the year. Um, and so that's another good way of looking at it. But I'd say Instagram is probably the best way. Um, to look at a gallery of my work and then obviously if people wanted to look I have a really big gallery that they can um, um, Click on to from my website There's probably about three or four hundred images in my gallery that they can look through of all the different weddings that I've done Just last year and so and there's a baby gallery as well if people wanted to look at my um, At my sort of newborns maternity shoots family portraits and things like that Excellent. Those so, are both on my website, but Instagram, if you wanted to, if you're an Instagram girl or an Instagram boy, send, yeah. <laughs> you can go on Instagram and see my work. Yeah. Brilliant. It's always worth mentioning that, that Jen and I are, are working together on a new project called Scottish Wedding Collective. So we created a Facebook page where we brought yes. together about 15 or 16 suppliers, guys that we know, guys that we, we trust, um, just to yeah. try and make things a bit easier for couples when they're, they're planning their wedding. So. Yeah. Have a look at that on Facebook. Um, there'll be things coming up. We're working on some exciting plans, so keep an eye on that and something to look out for. It's very good, and I would think I think that if you go on to that um, Facebook page, 
that it's really good for you to know that because I've been in business for 16 years that I would not recommend those people if they were not trustworthy and their work was not good. Mm -hmm. Obviously you have to get through a real, I'm really picky about who I would recommend. And obviously because if somebody lets you down, then it makes me look bad. Yeah. And so all of these people that were, that we've collaborated in this Facebook page, um, are um, really trustworthy and their work is excellent. Yeah. So I would highly recommend going on the page. Great. Listen, Jen, thanks very much for your time. I'm sure everyone's found that really useful. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for that, Jen. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe above and switch on the notifications. Until the next time.